Heidegger, 1889 to 1976. Martin Heidegger was born in Mischkirch in Baden-Württemberg in Germany into a Catholic family of small means. The local priest helped him to attend school in Freiburg in Constance. At St. Conrad Seminary in Constance, Heidegger had his spiritual advisor, a future Archbishop of Freiburg, Conrad Grober. Grober gave him a copy of Franz Brentano's On the Manifold Meaning of Being According to Aristotle written in 1862, which Heidegger said he did not understand at the time, but which later triggered the interest in metaphysics that led to his writing Being in Time. Before turning to philosophy, however, Heidegger had a brief moment as a Jesuit seminarian, and then went to study theology at Freiburg University, changing to philosophy after two years in 1911. In 1915, he took a post as a philosophy lecturer at the university soon afterwards marrying one of his students. They had two weddings, one Catholic for him and one Protestant for her. They had two sons, and their marriage was lifelong, though Heidegger had a well-publicized affair with Hannah Arendt when she was his student at Marburg University after he moved there in 1923. He had a much lo longer affair over several decades with another student, Elizabeth Blockman, who had a distinguished career as an educational theorist. Blockman was a friend of Heidegger's wife, and it appears from correspondence that Heidegger and his wife conducted an open marriage in which she too had affairs. A an aside is appropriate here. Private lives are generally no one else's business, but Heidegger's personal and political life, as with Sartre's later, attracts attention because some choosing <clears throat> the side against um, the question of whether we understand writers better if we know their biographies take it to be more than merely journalistic interest. On the other hand, as, as is also pointed out, not only can biographical knowledge distort one's view of a thinker's work, but especially in the case of women, it can be used to devalue or discredit that work. A suggestion as to how such understanding might, on the other hand, again, help to breach the high barriers that sexism imposes against women is offered by the difference that biographical information makes to the reception of work by women as variously situated as Harriet Taylor and Frida Kahlo. The question is an open one, but important. In the years before Heidegger went to Marsburg, he was close to Husserl, acting as his assistant. They discussed phenomenology intensively, and Husserl thought that Heidegger would be his colleague in developing a new science of consciousness. In 1919, Heidegger broke with Catholicism, but not with Christianity, and soon thereafter began a detailed study of Aristotle's metaphysics and the scholastic commentators. In his Marburg lectures, he distanced himself from Husserl's views, but dedicated being and time to him nonetheless. Husserl retired from the chair of philosophy at Freiburg in 1928, and Heidegger returned to replace him. Five years later, Heidegger joined the Nationalist Socialist Nazi Party and became Freiburg's rector. He re reassigned the rectorship after one year, but during it carried out some of the Nazi educational reforms with what has been described as enthusiasm. He remained a member of the party until 1945, the end of World War II, refusing requests by former students to apologize or to condemn the Nazis' atrocities. He was banned from teaching between 1945 and 1951, but in the later year he was granted emeritus status. During the 1930s, a change occurred in Heidegger's thinking, the turn, marked by an interest in aesthetics, especially poetry, and most especially the poetry of Hölderlin, and also in Nietzsche. He came to view the doctrine of being and time differently, and in part response, part development, wrote his second major work, Contributions to Philosophy, in the late 1930s. He did not publish it. It appeared in German in 1988, 12 years after his death, and in English translation, 23 years after his death, in 1999. When he was at Freiburg University as a theology student, Heidegger had Professor Karl Bregg as a teacher. Bregg was the author of a book entitled On Being, an Outline of Ontology. Heidegger's first encounter with Husserl's thought came shortly afterwards in the form of Husserl's two-volume logical investigations. Both factors prompted his turn from theology to philosophy. There were other straws in the wind. Henry Bergson was lecturing and writing about his, about his time uh, in France. And when Heidegger came to know Husserl personally, they discussed the latter's increasingly interest 
and the consciousness of time. The significance of the connection between time and being was apparent to Heidegger early, but these influences made him think that the question concerns the fundamental nature of being itself. In the metaphysics, Aristotle had cataloged the various meanings of being as the true, as potentiality and actuality, as substance, as property, as purely mental existence, and essentially as pertaining to dependent entities, as relating to the categories. But Aristotle said that he wished to know the meaning of being, its essence, being as being. We speak of being in many senses, Aristotle wrote in the Metaphysics, but always with a view to one dominant sense. It is proper for one science to study being insofar as it is being. Heidegger's question was exactly the same. He wrote, quote, The following question concerned me in quite a vague manner. If being is pre predicated with manifold significance, then what it what is its leading fundamental signification? What does being or sign mean? He regarded the topic of being as having been neglected by philosophy on the grounds that it was either indefinable or too general but that without an investigation of it, we would never understand the conditions that make it possible in the most general sense for anything to be. Heidegger's starting point is the idea that an answer to the question, what does being mean, has to be given by considering the way the question poses itself, and also to what, more suggestively still, to whom it appears as a question. What or who is, quote, the being of the question? Although it might appear that the question of what being is should be entirely general and should tell us about the being of anything else anywhere, one particular being is consistently present every time the question is asked, namely, the being who poses the question. End quote. Investigating this begin being might lead the way to an understanding of being in general, but the investigation is not to be conducted in the familiar terms of psychology, anthropology, or, for example, Cartesian philosophy, but instead must be conducted phenomenologically, starting with an indeterminate pre-theoretical awareness of being in the world, thus hyphenated to show that the being in question is not something separate from the world, over against it or in a subject-object relationship with it, but as in and of it. The being of this being is called by Heidegger the sign, literally their being or existing. A Dasein is a being there, a concept that is primitive <clears throat> and general. Heidegger warns against identifying a Dasein with a human being in the ordinary sense of the latter term, but in pursuit of clarification, one might think of Dasein as a human being viewed from the metaphysical point of view of his essential awareness of existing and moreover as aware of existing in the world. The sign possesses lagos, not to be understood in the usual way as reason or language, but as an ability or capacity to collect and remember the manifestations of being which constitute the world. When we use a spade, for example, the network of meanings of which the spade is part, what purposes it can be used for, why is it needed for those purposes, why those purposes is that themselves exist, and so on. Together with all other such manifestations of being constitute the world. The sign is thus a collecting point where beings come up out of concealment and make themselves present. These two notions of coming out of concealment and being present are key to Heidegger's metaphysics. Heidegger took Parmenides' idea of aletheia, literally discourse and therefore truth, as the unconcealment or self-showing by which beings manifest themselves. He took this to entail that the primary sense of being from Aristotle onwards is therefore presence, the unconcealment shows what is present, both in the sense of not absent and in the sense of at this moment, hence the connection with time. Indeed, the connection with time is fundamental, for the sign is stretched between birth and death, having been thrown into the world at a point in history, faced with a range of possibilities from which he has to choose in such a way as to exist authentically. Though it is not a possibility but an inevitability, the inevitability of death, that is especially relevant to achieving authenticity, because it emphasizes the sign's individuality and opens him to dread or anxiety or angst. The authentic manner of the sign's dealing with the world, having to do with something, producing something, attending to something, and looking after it, making use of something, giving something up and letting it go, 
undertaking, accomplishing, evincing, interrogating, considering, discussing, determining, is the care or concern which things concern with things and with others, which is the structure of the sign itself, a relationship Heidegger also calls handiness and equip, equip, equipmentality. The anchoring concepts of being and time are sign and aletheia, being and discourse, or unconcealment. The discussion of the fundamental nature of being is confined to the very first part of the treatise, most of the rest being a discussion of the sign in existentialist terms. Disclosure is affected by anxiety and care, Note that anxiety is not fear, which is always fear of something particular, but rather is an indefinite and general mood of dread or anguish that alters the way the world seems to design. Disclosure is like a clearing in the forest, which opens to design its self-understanding of the structure of care, this being threefold. Thrownness. We are thrown into the world without any answers available to the question, why am I here? Why am I here now? Projection. The process of looking at the things around us to find possibilities for escaping our dread. And finally, fallenness, the condition produced by design's tendency to fail itself, to distract itself from authenticity. But only by achieving authenticity can the anguish of existence be overcome. Given that being and time is a work that starts by announcing itself as an examination of the fundamental concept of ontology, its focus on design and the quest for authenticity seems, to some critics, Purcell, not least among them, to be a distraction. In his terms, it announces to a reduction of phenomenology to anthropology. For Husserl, the way the sign relates to the world is through consciousness, but in adding moods as a way of making the world present to the sign, not as the object of its attention, but as the horizon of its existence. Heidegger insisted that the world is not something over against the sign, treated as a knowing subject, but is part of the sign's own existence. Again, I do want to uh, briefly mention what the sign means for Heidegger. It literally means being there, or in, in another sense, there being, or existing. So the sign for, for Heidegger is there being, or existing. It is, however, being towards death that is the fundamental key to authenticity when design accepts its own fin finitude or finitude. In the inevitability of death, it opens up, discloses Dasein's own being to itself and completes it by making sense of it as a whole. Being in time was never finished. Heidegger published the first part somewhat in a hurry under pressure to secure the chair in philosophy at Marburg University. But he did not complete it because over the following years, the emphasis of his interest shifted partly to aesthetics and Nietzsche, as mentioned, but also towards writing a historical inquiry into the science understanding of being, or their beings, or existence's understanding of being. Latter still, after the Second World War, when he was again allowed to teach following the denazification period, he turned his attention yet further afield, among other things to the subject of technology, examining what it is and what relationship human existence, the phrase he uses here, not the sign, can have with it. Because of Heidegger's membership of the Nazi party, his life and his work have been surrounded by controversy with there being no simple divide between defenders and apologists on one side and critics on the other, but a scrimmage consisting of those who defend everything and admire, those who reject the philosophy because of the Nazism, those who reject the philosophy on its own terms and attack him for the Nazism, those who defend the Nazism but criticize the philosophy, those who attack the Nazism but defend the philosophy, and so on. In 1966, a friend of Heidegger brought journalists from Der Spiegel magazine to his house to interview him. He had been persuaded with much effort over a long period that he must address his Nazi past. He agreed on condition that the interview would not be published until he had died. If that seemed to prompt my revelation or confession, the journalists were disappointed. He was tense and nervous in the interview and remained evasive. Not only that, but he seemed to add a new betrayal to the old. When asked by the journalist whether philosophy influences reality, included political reality, he first hid behind the claim that, quote, a new kind of thinking is required, which is not yet clear, end quote, but has something to do with addressing the advent of technologies that old systems of politics will not be able to manage. And then, when pressed, he retreated into saying, no, philosophy cannot influence reality or politics. This is 
in direct contradiction to what he had said in the speech made at the grand theatrical event of his inauguration as rector of Freiburg University, complete with road processions, many dignitaries, and swastika flags. The young journalist from Der Spiegel said, quote, We politicians, semi-politicians, citizens, journalists, etc., constantly have to make some decision or other. We expect help from the philosopher, even if, of course, only indirect help in roundabout ways. And now we hear, I cannot help you, end quote. Heidegger replied, I cannot. To the dismay of those who, like Heidegger himself, wish always to separate the thinker from the thought, his black notebooks, published in 2014, pose a serious problem, for they appear to reveal his anti-Semitism's connection with his philosophy in applying that Jews are anti-Dasein, or anti-existing, or anti-being there, who manipulate Dasein in the course of their conspiracies. The exponents of literary theory would make short work of connecting the idea of anti-design or it not being there with the intentions of the final solutions.